Item number, SCP-534, Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. All instances of SCP-534-1, 2, and 3 are to be kept in a plastic-covered airtight containment chamber. Entrance to the containment chamber is to be conducted through a double airlock, the chamber of which is to be equipped with a high-grade disinfectant. With the exception of testing, all personnel entering SCP-534's containment chamber are to wear Class 3 biohazard suits. Description Although the biological mechanisms behind their support are currently not fully understood, SCP-534 appears to be a collection of several different human blood cells and cell fragments that have increased in size several hundred times. The components of SCP-534 have been placed into three different classifications. SCP-534-1 Erythrocytes SCP-534-2 Neutrophils and SCP-534-3 Thrombocytes All samples of SCP-534 appear to have the ability to survive while floating in the air and are affected by air currents. All concentrations of cells appear to match normal blood with SCP-534-1 comprising approximately 97% of SCP-534. No instances of SCP-534 require nutrients. SCP-534-1 acts in a manner typical of normal ethrocytes, and averages 1.7 millimeters in width. It will absorb oxygen from the surrounding air. Upon coming into contact with living cells of another organism, SCP-534-1 will actively diffuse oxygen into the organism. Due to SCP-534-1's large size, oversaturation is common. Allowing SCP-534-1 to enter or touch areas of living tissue may cause oxygen poisoning, resulting in death of the affected area. SCP-534-1 appears to have an indefinite lifespan. SCP-534-2 is typically 2.2 millimeters across and will perform phagocytosis upon any foreign organic material it comes into contact with. Air samples from SCP-534-2's containment area have shown them to be 99.9% .9 pathogen-free. Subjects entering areas containing large amounts of SCP-534-2 will report an itchiness in their skin, due to SCP-534-2 destroying their epidermis. Continual exposure to SCP-534-2 will result in subjects being eaten alive. SCP-534-2 dies normally. The remaining mass is eaten by other instances of SCP-534-2. SCP-534-3 is generally 0.5 millimeters across. It will release normal proteins upon becoming disturbed, causing several instances of SCP-534-1 to clot. Recorded sizes of clots have been up to 3 centimeters in length. Subjects who stay in an area with a large amount of SCP-534-3 and SCP-534-1 will become covered in clots within one hour. Inhaling SCP-534-1 and SCP-534-3 simultaneously is lethal. Like SCP-534-1, SCP-534-3 appears to have an indefinite lifespan. SCP-534 was originally discovered by Foundation personnel in Prometheus Labs' biology sector, with notes indicating its creation as, quote, a replacement for all blood transfusions." End quote. Although SCP-534-2 was multiplying rapidly, SCP-534-1 and SCP-534-3 are unable to reproduce and were in limited quantity. Currently, there is no way of reproducing SCP-534-1 or 3, and personnel are advised to be careful in their handling. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, Go watch SCP-533, Snake Necklace, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.